The Super Nintendo, often known as the Super NES, is a 16-bit video game console produced by Nintendo. It debuted in 1990. Following the successful NES, it is Nintendo's third console. The console included enhanced graphic capabilities as well as dedicated audio hardware. It could use specific visual chips integrated in-game cartridges such as the FX chip which could display 3D polygons like in Star Fox. The Super Nintendo sold exceptionally well and is often regarded as a worldwide success. So today I'm looking at the 10 best racing driving games on the Super Nintendo. I absolutely loved the Super Nintendo growing up. I had the Sega Mega Drive before it, but as soon as the SNES was released, I had to have one. So without further ado, here are Classic Replay's top 10 driving slash racing slash checkpoint whatever racing games. And there's a little bonus towards the end. Any game that allows you to drive around in a Ferrari Testarossa is a winner in my book. But graphics at the time, for me personally, I thought they were breathtaking. I genuinely believed that the end result was something special. The car's handling and physics feel as good as anything. And given the fast speed the game runs at, for me, that's always something to celebrate. The game that went on to inspire Need for Speed. This one is fast with lively graphics but I'm probably going to get some stick for adding this into my top 10. And I also noticed on Wikipedia that GamePro back in the day described Full Throttle as a thoroughly average racer with derivative gameplay and so-so controls, graphics and music and sound effects. Obviously, I don't agree with that and that's why it's in my list. So, motorcycle racing with the intense addition of jet skis. I had this one for the Amstrad CPC back in the day. I also played it on the ZX Spectrum, but it's the Super Nintendo version where, for me, it feels right at home. And yes, Formula One games can be a little bit like Marmite. Not everybody's into them, but I know a good game when I play it. And you know what? SNES owners never received um, a copy of Formula One Grand Prix from Jeff Crammond. So for Formula One fans uh, on the Super Nintendo, it doesn't get much better than this. I think Stunt Race FX has held up remarkably well. You know, all things considered. I thought the presentation was slick back in the day. Uh, the music and sound effects were really good. And despite the processor hungry nature of the game, this wasn't a top end, high end PC. So you really have to give the programmers massive respect. There's a cool feature as well where the camera angles mimic those of watching on TV. I think Super Chase HQ arrived in the twilight years of the Super Nintendo's lifespan. Uh, I think had it appeared earlier, maybe it would have been a bigger hit. The graphics are great and it took Chase HQ, well I think, in a positive direction. I liked it and it continued and captured the essence of the original. You can also turbo boost. So here was a game that mixed the cool crimes of Miami Vice into a driving game and I think they pulled it off. Arguably one of the fastest, flashiest racing games. Let's go all Jeremy Clarkson on the Super Nintendo. Better still, there's awesome multiplayer action. This one is really worth fastening your seatbelt for. If, like me, you're a fan of arcade racing games, you really need look no further. There's a hint of Lotus Turbo Esprit about it from Gremlin Graphics, and at its heart, at its core, it's a fantastic checkpoint racer. I'm dicing with death here. This is better than the first one. This is seat of the pants stuff from start to finish. It's bigger, it's better, and it's bolder. Absolutely, 100%, it takes all that was good about the original and it turns up the heat. In fact, they're still making games today that are trying to better this. Horizon Chase, anybody? 
And whilst that's a fantastic game, and I've bought it on the Switch, the PlayStation 4, and various other consoles, this still takes some beating. I originally knew this as Crazy Cars 3 on the Amstrad CPC, and then later I played it on the Amiga. Now, Lamborghini on the Amiga, I think the only difference is that it was a two-player game. But regardless of what system I played it on, if you take a look under the hood and see what's driving things, you should be pleasantly surprised. Lamborghini is where rubber meets the road and your life becomes a gamble. Unlike the real thing, you can get good at both. I was told the other day that I'm too old to play Super Nintendo. I responded with a two-finger salute. It would have been rude not to. Now, these things are all banter, so nothing really to get excited about. But whilst we're on this note, I think that I play the Super Nintendo more now, today, than at any other time. And it's for reasons like F-Zero that I still can't get enough. So here's a question for you then. So what game did you spend the most time on overall? Oh, I like this bit. The ones that nearly got away. With Mario Kart, Nintendo hit the big time. It was enjoyed by so many of us as children. As you accelerate away, the pseudo 3D and road update scroll by as smoothly as silk until your car spins around and jumps for joy. 
Oh, you see, I've come all over nostalgic now. Oh, my goodness me. Talk about flawless gameplay. Absolute gold. So, I hope you enjoyed this top 10. I want to do more about the Super Nintendo. Please share, subscribe, and until next time, bye!